Today it's very hard or harder than it was in the past for young engineers to get a job. There are many uh, layoffs and uh, we are sorry to say that, but um, it, especially with AI emerging, there are fewer jobs and um, you have to really be somehow more special than you were um, in some task to, um, to avoid being replaced by, by an AI machine. I was not born in a tech-friendly environment, so I was not really supposed to choose this uh, path of computer science or science in general. Um, I come from a very simple family and uh, all throughout my middle school I had no idea about technology. I actually ended up finding out about programming languages and uh, laptops and phones at high school when I moved to another city and uh, I came to a high school which was focused on mathematics and informatics and this is when I actually started uh, learning programming specifically C++ and I did uh, C++ programming and algorithms all throughout the high school. Before coming to high school um, the only thing I had were books and maths, so the courses that I was having in middle school. And I just have this drive for knowledge, for finding out how things work. And my interest for that is the universe, right? It's uh, how are we even um, standing, like uh, turning around the sun, revolving around the sun each year, uh, how the gravitation works, how the... Um, I don't know how the trains are made, how the airplanes are flying and not falling, so many, many things. Because of my passion for science, I was willing to volunteer for anything that would get me closer to, to knowledge. So I did a lot of volunteering in high school. I did a lot of competitions and contests and workshops. I did uh, citizen science. I was a volunteer for the Romanian Society for Cultural Astronomy. I was uh, showing kids how to look into the telescope and find Saturn or the moon or any other very interesting uh, sources in the sky. And I also did internships when I was in university and uh, really pitched people. I, I really talked to professor when I liked a course, for example, um, I talk to the professors and I just propose them whether they have a project that I can uh, get involved into. And I was really willing for, for projects. I didn't really ask about any remuneration or any advantages for me. The only advantage was to actually get more knowledge and to be better at uh, what I was, uh, I was doing. Also networking is very crucial because it's actually increasing the chances of getting an opportunity. Um, the vast majority of jobs are filled through networking. And for example, when I was in my second year of college, I, I took a machine learning course. I really liked it. It's actually the the, the moment when something clicked in my mind and I realized that this is what I, I want to do. And um, I, after the course, after the course ended, I ended up um, proposing the professor whether she wants to um, take me, uh, get involved into a project that she has. And fortunately, she really had. And um, this is how I had my first internship. So how I ended up working at the European Space Agency, well, that's another interesting story. Um, in that case, it was not about networking. I just wanted to do something space science related. I, so as I said, I started my uh, computer science degree and um, I really wanted to get closer to, to space science in, a, in some way or another. And uh, I really, uh, I actually applied on, the, on their website. They had, um, they had traineeship opportunities, which were apparently for the master students, but I just, I just wanted to ignore that requirement and uh, applied anyway. And fortunately, I got an answer and they were very willing to, to have me there. And um, I 
generally had a very good uh, experience working with the manager of XMM Newton, which is an X-ray uh, mission. And um, also uh, the project in itself was very interesting. I had to gather images from uh, multiple X-ray missions like New Star and uh, Chandra and Bipovsax, which are um, trying to find um, fluxes or of very um, high energy sources in the sky, like um, black holes or variable stars. And I was there from a software developer, um, let's say, perspective. So I was coding in Python mainly and um, I, SQL also for creating the database. And what we wanted was to extract fluxes, which are some sort of energies from the images, by looking at multiple, uh, let's say, factors. Um, each space mission has its particularity. It's, there's no one space mission like the other. And we had to look at the uh, particularity of the telescope, whether it has multiple mirrors, how many of them, and how are they arranged, and how can we actually construct an, an image out of, out of that. Also, the um, point spread function, um, which is an impo important factor in uh, space imaging, uh, how, which is related to how the energy is distributed across the field of view of the telescope, and um, how the detector responds to the, to the light that it sees. And we had to gather all these images and to, to calibrate them to be able to have a historical notion of the flux. So this meant that we should somehow equalize the, the space mission and their images in order to um, get accurate fluxes. And these fluxes, fluxes were showing us how the energy of the source was fluctuating over the years. And it's, it was very fascinating because I, I really had the chance to witness um, some discoveries after that. Uh, we, through our database, we found out, uh, for example, a source which had a very significant change of flux over some decades, uh, and which usually means uh, that the source is either um, variable star or um, supernova or um, active galactic nucleus. What I liked at the ESA is that they were really excited about what they were doing. I've met lots of researchers. Uh, each of them were working on a specific mission and uh, even at lunch they were willing to tell um, about what they were working on and what they were, their challenges were. And uh, we were all very excited about what we were doing. It was a very constructive environment, a very supportive one. And um, we had lots of fun together. And um, it seems like there is place for everyone uh, at ESA or even at uh, NASA. Uh, it's, it's, there's a place for engineers, for computer scientists, for physicians, of course. I would say that my work at Intel is trying to democratize how we can run LLMs, which usually are dependent on some GPUs on a certain server, and how to run them locally on a, on a processor, which is smaller and cheaper, and now how to not be very dependent on, on the GPUs and still have that uh, advantage of LLM inference, which we which we need um, more and more. If I can give some advice on how to construct a very good resume or how to, let's say, strengthen your skills, it would be, first of all, to start as early as possible um, and not only start as early as possible, but also keep up the good work. So have the determination to really do the things that you're passionate about and not lose motivation um, even if what you want to achieve is years apart um, and another thing that i think that i find very important is to do volunteering and self-study this is crucial because it builds the um, let's say individual work that you will need almost everywhere in uh, industry or research environments. Another aspect which I was quite uh, good at was to, as I said, to propose uh, to researchers or uh, teachers or managers to take me under their wings 
and um, also I took courses that were not mine. Uh, I, for example, I came once uh, to another professor from another university and I asked her if she accepts me for the, for the course. It was a data mining course and uh, she says, of course, yes. She was quite happy and I realized that actually nobody rejects someone who wants to learn. And um, I would really encourage people to, to just go and learn from, from what they find uh, interesting and the people that they find interesting. For me, mentors have been one of the most crucial factors for my success in, uh, in my projects. Even though I started at a, let's say, a company or a research project with not too much knowledge, um, having very good mentors who were there for me every day to answer my questions and um, didn't seem pissed off by well, my questions. It actually helped me very much to gain knowledge as fast as possible in what I actually had to do. And uh, they helped me achieve better and high quality, uh, let's say, um, results. Also, during my university, I, I started uh, teaching. I was teaching AI laboratories because I just wanted to share what I, what I knew, what I was um, passionate about, and also inspire others to realize that AI is really um, taking over and we, we really have to know how AI works. Uh, I had lots of rejections in my life. I'm very happy for each of them. I think that they made me become very um, confident and uh, really uh, asking myself every time I had a rejection, wait, uh, wh what do I, do I actually look for? What, what are my skills? What do I have to learn? Um, what did I miss? Uh, was this personal? Um, I thought it was personal, but I changed that. I changed my narrative. I actually think that failures are very important, are a very important part of the journey. And this is actually what makes people stand out. Um, I would rather prefer the story of someone who had many rejections and achieved success at a certain point than someone who didn't have any rejection and cannot even realize how, how life is actually. Because in reality, we still face a lot of rejections and failures and uh, we do a lot of mistakes. We really, we really have to embrace that. Um, perfectionism is not the answer, even though it's good to um, it's good to try to achieve perfectionism. Uh, but just so we know, we can't really achieve it. So we should just stay humble and be willing to learn from any mistake. Young individuals and young engineers um, might be very disappointed if they are rejected, but I think that it doesn't say too much about the quality of their work. It rather says about the context or what the recruiter is looking for or um, what specific skills that they might actually um, uh, lack. I think that one pitfall um, that very young let's say students may fall into is the perfectionism and comparison with uh, other people or other students or individuals. Um, in high school or let's say until university, I was, very, I was a very perfectionist person. And um, I think that it affected my tolerance for mistakes. So it was harder for me to get up and uh, do the good work when I had a failure. I tried to learn from that and I think everyone should learn that um, perfectionism should not um, have too much relevance in our lives. It's not enough to just go to courses and have a good grade. Actually, a grade of 10 doesn't tell too much about a person. Uh, it's more about the projects and internships and um, the work that you're doing um, in your in your spare time or the the projects that you would like to uh, to start and the things that you are passionate about. Another aspect would be to not reject yourself. I did that many times because I thought that I was not 
enough for a certain, let's say, project or a certain person or a certain professor, um, because the, there are many stereotypes and also discrimination. And uh, I think that we should simply ignore them. Um, I was quite shy in my early years, um, but apparently my passion for science overcame that and was bigger than my uh, shyness. And I, I just want to encourage the shy people to be um, not too shy when it comes to pursuing their uh, career or pursuing their, let's say, passions in science or any, any field.